now we will discuss heat exchangers this is a very important topic in the field of heat transfer now it is true that so far we have studied the mechanism of heat transfer from one fluid to another fluid from fluid to solid okay we have not learned one fluid to another fluid we have learned from solid to fluid within the solid conduction but in practice what happens in almost all industrial processes we have to exchange heat from one fluid to other fluid and the device in which it has, it is done is known as heat exchanger which allows the heat to be exchanged for an example just in condensation boiling i gave the examples like that steam power plant condenser where the steam is condensed it is an example for condensation at the same time heat exchanger this condenser itself where the cooling water flows through the tube and the steam condenses at the outer surface as a whole it is heat exchanger where the heat exchange takes place between water and steam similarly in case of refrigeration condenser that the heat transport takes place between refrigerant that is a working fluid in refrigerating cycles and the air similar is the case for boiling in a, that a, a boiler that in the water tube the water is heated where the combustion products flows past the tube this is also a heat exchanger apart from this there are various processes where phase change may not take place here phase change takes place one liquid has to be heated from some temperature lower temperature to higher temperature one liquid may be required to be cold cooled from some high temperature to low temperature this is accomplished in a device known as heat exchanger so therefore we will discuss heat exchangers now heat exchangers are of two types basically one is direct contact another is indirect contact now indirect contact is the exchanger where the two fluids which exchanges heat does not get an opportunity to have contact between one another that means they are not mixed they are separated by a solid wall and via the solid wall the heat transfer takes place the condenser of a steam power plant the boiler tube and many other are such examples and this is mostly used in industry because the two fluids cannot be mixed together otherwise the fluid properties will change and will not be able to regain the fluid which is required for the subsequent process but in some cases where it is not needed a direct contact heat exchanger takes place where both the fluids are directly contact for example in a cooling tower you know in a cooling tower the hot water which comes out from the circulating or the tube cooling water tube circulating water tube we tell in the condenser that takes the heat from the steam which is condensed so that water has to be cooled again to recirculate through the condenser tubes so to do that we have to cool that water and that is done in a device known as cooling tower that is also heat exchanger because it heat is exchanged so this is cooled with the help of air atmospheric air and there what is happened the water is sprayed in the form of atomized fine atomized spray through different nozzles used for this purpose and air is allowed to flow and which flows in the opposite direction of the spray and they both of them are mixed together and the air takes the heat of the water and some of the water also evaporates make a evaporative cooling of the bulk of the water i am not going into that deep this is one example of direct contact type exchange in a jet condenser so this is known as surface condenser earlier i told jet condenser the steam is ejected in the form of jet sorry water is ejected in the form of jet in the steam which is condensed so therefore the condensate is a mixture of steam condensed plus the water jet which is sprayed so therefore direct and indirect heat exchangers we will discuss the indirect heat exchangers which are largely used in practice 
and another type of heat exchanger is used which is known as regenerator the difference between regenerator and this type of indirect and direct heat exchanger these are known as recuperator the difference is that this recuperator type of heat exchanger where there may be two types direct and indirect the both fluids flow simultaneously and the heat exchange takes place either by a solid material or by the direct mixing but in a regenerator what happens the cold and hot fluids are allowed to flow alternatively through a solid body which has a high heat storage capacity with high specificity they take the heat from the hot water and store it and when the hot fluid i am sorry hot fluid they store it and when the cold fluid is allowed to pass through it they exchange that heat and that solid matrix is made of either pebbles powders wire mesh which produces large surface area for heat transfer and at the same time a high specific heat or heat capacity to store maximum heat and alternately the hot and cold fluid are passed through it and there is a switch which changes the hot and cold fluid cycle that means that operates in such a way once the hot fluid is allowed to flow and another time cold fluid is allowed to flow this is known as regenerator this is also of two types one is static regenerator where the solid matrix is fixed and alternately hot and cold fluid is allowed to flow another case is there which is used in the air preheater of a steam power plant these are for your information where a matrix moves it is in a form of drum which rotates and one side continuously the hot fluid flows that is the combustion products hot gas and another side air which is being preheated before going to the furnace is allowed to flow that means the solid matrix by its dynamic nature rotation captures heat stores heat from one side when it is in contact with the hot fluid and when it comes in turn other side with the cold fluid it transfers heat to the cold fluid that is the dynamic regenerator this is for your information but we will learn mostly that is used in industry is the recuperator type of heat exchanger with indirect contact that means heat transfer takes place between hot and cold fluid by uh, via a solid partition now i show you the most simple type heat exchanger is like this a concentric tube heat exchangers what happened this is the most simple type we can conceive that there is a two concentric pipes one is the inner one and another is the outer one so one fluid flows through the inner tube another fluid flows through the outer tube usually the hot fluid is flow allowed to flow through the inner and the cold one is outer but not necessarily in a steam power plant it is other way and ultimately the entire thing is insulated now the difference between these two is that in this left hand figure the flow of both the fluids are in the same direction whereas the flow of both the fluids are in the opposite direction now here this inner tube is known as the tube where that the outer tube which creates this annular passage for the flow of the other fluid is known as the shell that's why this type of heat exchanger is known as shell and tube heat exchanger which is very very common and every industry people tell shell and tube heat exchanger if you can do not know what is shell and tube heat exchanger as if you do not know what i will tell the name of your parents like that so shell and tube heat exchanger are you know what is a shell and tube heat exchanger shell and tube i don't know but then you are gone so this is known as shell and tube the outer tube is known as shell and this arrangement is known as parallel flow and this is counter flow and from my student days i tell you i found that this is a misnomer because when i thought from the fluid mechanics point of view both are parallel flow in a sense the flow streamlines are parallel to each other it should be co flow and it should be counter flow and when i asked my teacher he told no i cannot change the definition this is going for years and decades together is parallel flow and counter flow you cannot define it as a co flow and counter flow however in my mind always it worked that parallel flow is a co flow and this is a counter flow. 
Now sometimes this direction may not be parallel. That's why I am telling because next time when we will define there may be a perpendicular direction that one fluid may flow perpendicular to the another flow direction that is known as cross flow. And usually to enhance the heat transfer this is done like this. This is a type of modified type of cell and tube heat exchanger with one cell pass and one tube pass cross counter flow mode of operation. What is the meaning of uh, this I am telling you? Here the difference from the very simple one concept here is the number of tubes are there. And one fluid flows through these tubes on one direction and goes out from the other direction. So this one direction flow of a fluid is known as one pass. These are all industrial language again I am telling. So you see our case is like that starting from boundary layer thickness and all these things. Now we have come down to industrial terminology that pass that is known as one pass, one tube pass. But there are multiple tubes but single pass. Now the cell side fluid which is entered like this and going, sorry this is inlet and this is tube inlet, sorry correct cell inlet and cell outlet that means this must have a counter flow type because the tube inlet that is the tube fluid flows in this direction whereas the shell tube flows in this direction this should be counter flow but at the same time this is a cross flow cross counter flow why buffer walls are placed like this so that cell side tube after flowing like this it don't flow like this it doesn't flow like this it goes like this this that, that means that creates more residence time that creates more residence time by changing its flow direction and makes more heat transfer with this fluid and this way if you divide the flow make the hurdles like that by pu putting these walls these are known as buffle buffle walls or buffle you can have a cross flow and the counter flow time when it flows in this direction for example here in this direction through this bubble it is a cross flow again it is a counter flow so therefore it is a mix of cross counter flow mode of operation here is a one cell pass one tube pass but multiple tube and use of bubbles to increase the flow residence time for this cell side fluid and to cover a larger path like this okay and it to make a cross and counter flow mode of heat exchanger now next i show you Shell and tube heat exchanger again for your practical information industry people will be very happy. This is what shell and tube type number one is one cell pass and two tube pass. You see two tube pass that means tube inlet one direction again it comes out is a U tube type tube outlet that means in a U shape it comes here that means this is one pass and it comes like that. That means inlet and outlet in the same side and this is the shell side inlet with the buffalo wall. So this is a two tube one cell pass and two tube pass with the buffle both cross counter and parallel mode. Similarly number two is the two cell passes and one tube pass there are two cell that means this is one cell in series another cell these are all done to enhance the heat transfer rate to meet the required service that means the amount of heating or cooling of the fluid desired. This you can see in any book there is nothing great to take any note out of this just this is for your information. Now another type of uh, cross flow heat exchangers are used this before going uh, to this I think uh, well compact heat exchangers this also comes in the category of compact heat exchangers are okay. First of all I will explain this this is another type of heat exchanger where the tubes side fluids are flowing through a number of tubes and where there are number of plates attached to this which acts as fin surface fin to it both fluids unmixed what is the meaning of this i will tell you the arrangement is like that these plates act as fins to all these tubes so through tube one fluid flows and heat exchange from this fluid to the outer fluid is enhanced by these fins whereas another fluid that is outer fluid which flows through the fin passage is a cross flow type through this fin passage that means this passage in between the fins 
this is a typical cross flow heat exchanger fin with both fluids unmixed means these are unmixed not that way that they are physical mixing but this unmixed word is used in heat exchanger that means this fluid is guided through this fin passage and is not allowed to move in the transverse direction this direction or this direction this is restricted this flows only in the same in this direction through this passage but here what happens there is an open space and there is a cell type of thing and the cross flow takes place there is no such restriction for the fluid to moves in both transverse direction that's why this is known as unfin uh, with one fluid mixed and the other fluid unmixed that means there is no fin to guide the flow of the other fluids in cross flow direction that is the only difference in the word unfin unmixed and mixed okay so therefore with one fluid mixed and the other unmixed that means this is unmixed this is guided through the tube this is not very important just a practical thing now which is important little bit but st still practical is compact heat exchanger this is very important employer ask what is a compact heat exchanger very simple very simple that we want a heat exchanger which must have a very high heat transfer rate so that it meets the service required huge service we have to cool a hot fluid by a very high degree of cooling that means the temperature difference is very large or the other way heating so that it will meet the desired service of high heat transfer rate but it should be compact be small how it is done we know the rate of heat transfer for a imposed temperature field depends upon the surface area so if you can make the surface area more heat transfer rate is more for which you know that the liquid is injected for heat transfer purpose in the form of spray this is because if you split the liquid into spray of very minute drops then the ratio of surface area to volume increases which enhances for the same flow of liquid the heat transfer rate by enhancing the surface area similarly if we can design a heat exchanger which provides a high surface area but a less volume because the size is very important if you tell i have a big heat exchanger which has a big surface area but it is so big that the size is big volume is big so that how can i accommodate this question of accommodation the space requirement so therefore the compact heat exchanger is an exchanger which is very small but high heat transfer rate that means whose surface area to volume ratio is very high that is the index that is known as surface area density so that surface area to volume ratio has to be very high so that in a small site we have high heat transfer rate there is a criteria not very much uh, uh, strict but we usually have this convention when the surface area per unit volume exceeds 700 meter square this you can write 700 meter square per meter cube you usually refer a heat exchanger as the compact heat exchanger so everybody wants for a compact is a simple example i am telling you that if you have a big long rod of diameter d and heat exchange takes place between the two fluid that shell and tube heat exchanger and shell so you know that if you go on increasing the length you have the more surface area pi dl pi dl is more so for example here you have the more more uh, length and more the surface area pi dl but the same length if you make a helical that coil tube helical coil or some if you make a coil tube within a small space you have more surface area sometimes by changing the flow field we create more surface area virtually by creating the residence time so anyway you have to provide something either by geometrical surface area by enhancing the heat transfer by providing extended surface area so that we have a or the flow field itself so that we have a compact heat exchangers okay next is this compact heat exchangers are of different type just i show you certain compact heat exchanger this is flat tube type of thing 
and the fin plates. These are also circular tubes with circumferential thin film, a uh, fins. This is with rectangular fins, which already I showed you. And this is very interesting. This goes. This is parallel plates with fins, and these these passages we have the fluid flowing, and another fluid flows through this alternate passage. One fluid flows through this passage. Another fluid flows through this passage from this direction. This is a cross flow, and also with a corrugated this surface which acts as a fin, which provides more surface area. Like this, these are the fins. These are for you. This is circumferential fin. This is the flat fins. That means extended surface area. That means somehow you have to make a geometry which provide more surface area, and if I have to make the flow in such a way that it provides more. heat transfer because you know from our basic heat transfer uh, knowledge that rate of heat transfer is enhanced by the temperature gradient which is which depends upon the flow field and also by the surface area because finally the heat transfer is minus k into gradient of temperature so next is okay this is all right now next i will go for go for the analysis but before that sometimes a question i ask used to ask now it is there is no scope some 20 years back if you go some of your teachers face this question so when they were my student because this question cannot be answered this is an informative thing if you don't know that what is the lard largest largest means from the compact point or the most that the most compact heat exchanger heat and mass exchanger sometimes heat and mass transfer are coupled in such in certain devices that is the chemical engineering domain not in your domain in the art can you tell me which is the most compact heat exchanger heat and mass exchanger in the art somebody tries to think sir something was used in that industry in usa some some radiator of uh, general motors in the harrison radiator division my elder brother went there and he told they have developed the most compact heat exchanger like that but what is the answer do you know the next question is that who is the creator of this heat exchanger the most comp you know the scientists so far have only exploited the nature we could not create a nature from you know the answer this question answer you know no no this compact it is soil scientist only exploit the nature cannot conquer the nature nature gives all clue to the scientist for solving the problems and to know the nature more and more so the creator is god with this thing also difficult to answer this creator is god through us we are implemented there the way the worker works but god is the designer this is our lung i cannot tell you the exact figure of the surface area of the lung that exchanges heat and mass transfer you will be astonished to know if one day you know what is the biological system you can ask suman chakravarti who is one of our bright and young colleagues who work in the interface of engineering and biomechanics uh, sorry bioscience he knows some quantitative figures you will be astonished to know the surface area of the lung however this is just one tips i give you that the most compact heat and mass exchanger designed by god through us in the art so we cannot reach any way near to that whatever exceptional engineers you are to design somebody that forget about your general motors harrison radiator division okay so medical people are astonished and that is the reason for which medical people never think of doing any research so they are very happy with their entire skill to maintain the thing because their maintenance is huge because the medical doctor tells me that what we will do beyond that the creation is so complex and such amazing to maintain it 
we spend our entire skill of the lifetime that is enough for us you people think of designing things okay many of your fathers may be medical officer you can